How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in this video we're quickly going to be covering one of the most effective and easy to set up settings in your PC to instantly improve performance. Today we're going to be covering the XMP or DOCP memory profiles built into your system that if you haven't manually gone in and turned on yourself, you could be losing anywhere from 10 to 50% of the performance available from your RAM in your system, resulting in lower FPS, more stuttering and not getting the performance from the system in which you paid good money for. This is incredibly simple, quick and easy to set up on nearly all systems that support it. As always, if you do enjoy this video, please do leave a like and a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm as it does help me out tremendously. But before we jump into all of that, a message from today's video sponsor, App My Site. App My Site is a fantastic and easy to use utility which can allow you to create your own app in minutes with no coding required, allowing you to quickly and easily customize all visuals and utilities built within your app, allowing you to fully personalize your app for your brand goals. Whether you're looking to launch an app for a storefront, CMS websites, or something simple like a blog, App My Site can help build four times more conversion with a focus on app design and useful features to attract more customers and increase session time, allowing for more and much healthier app conversions. All of these tools you would expect such as push notifications, app monetization, team collaboration, auto publish, real time sync and access to full analytics. And if you've got a current website it's as easy as one, two, three. One, connect your website to your mobile app. Two, personalize the application. And three, publish your app using Google Play and the Apple App Store. So join the other 170,000 plus App My Site customers by creating your app today using App My Site via the link in the description below. And again, a massive thanks to App My Site for sponsoring today's video. But as mentioned earlier on, on all of the systems that do support this, 99.9% .9 of the time, your system won't have this on by default. You'll have to go into your motherboard BIOS and manually set this yourself. So whether you or if someone else built your PC for you, this option will not be enabled by default. We're first of all going to check what our current RAM speed is in Windows. This works fine on both Windows 10 and 11 and to do this we're going to hit Control, Shift and Escape on our keyboard and this will open up Windows Task Manager. Head up to the Performance tab at the top. If Task Manager doesn't have this much information go to the bottom left and select More Details. Inside of here head up to the Performance tab, go to Memory and in the bottom right hand side you'll be able to see the speed in which your memory is currently running at. You'll also be able to see the amount of slots used. Now if you happen to have an odd amount of RAM in slots used, such as 1 out of 4 or 3 out of 4, it may be worthwhile either taking one RAM stick away or adding an additional RAM stick because in 99% of use cases you want to be running an even amount of RAM sticks to ensure that you have the correct level of memory bandwidth available with inside of Windows. That sounds quite complicated but I do have a whole video covering that and the common mistakes most people make when it comes to RAM and able to optimize that for your system for the best performance possible. So if that is something that interests you, consider checking out the video on screen now. Now before we turn turn on or set XMP on our system, it's recommended to first of all check two things. First up is checking the RAM we have installed to our system to see if it's compatible or if it has XMP profiles available to it. The easiest way to do this would be to take a look at the system memory you have installed where you should then be able to see the white sticker. On the white sticker you'll more than likely be able to see if it supports XMP, you'll also be able to see the speed it's rated for, the voltages and the timings. You don't need to pay too much attention to what these numbers actually mean but this may give an indication if XMP is available. Next up you need to figure out if XMP is supported by your motherboard. For this it's quite simple and easy to do. Navigate into Windows, hit the Windows button, search for DXDIAG or DXDIAG. Select run command for this. The main information we need to look at within of here is under system, system information, we need to find the system manufacturer and the system model. A system manufacturer is MicroStar International or MSI is an MS-7D13. So what I'm going to do is head over to Google and simply search for that system model number. Your system model is more than likely going to be completely different to mine and that's fine, just press enter once you've input it. This will then bring up the model of the motherboard you have installed to your system. But inside of here, find the manufacturer's website. For me, it's going to be this MSI page. Inside of the manufacturer's website, you want to navigate up towards the top where you should be able to find a button for support. Once you've selected that button, head over to the compatibility page. This could be a slight different layout depending on your motherboard's manufacturer, but you should be able to find this information. Once you've found that, head down to memory. Once you head down to memory, you can then sort the memory by the CPU you are using. Scroll down and this will then list all memory and memory compatibility modes available for your motherboard and what speeds it's been rated for. This will help you get a better indication as to what speeds are supported by your motherboard if you're not entirely sure if a certain memory kit will support XMP. Alternatively, if you have a specific RAM kit you want to check, you can input the model number with inside of here or the manufacturer. Let's say crucial, press enter, and this will then list you all of the crucial kits and the supported speed for those kits 
that are available on this motherboard. So again, when you took a look at the white label of the RAM inside of your system, if it was marked as a certain manufacturer and the speed for that, take the make, take the speed. If it's then rated on your motherboard's compatibility list, fantastic, that means it should be supported. If you can't see information regarding if your motherboard is supported or not, you can still go ahead and enable XMP on your system if it allows you to, but you may run into instability. If you do end up running into this and your system doesn't boot, all you'll need to do is disconnect all power from the system and all cables. Once that's done, hold down the power button on your PC with nothing plugged in. This will then dissipate the rest of the electricity remaining. Inside of the PC, then locate the motherboard's battery. Take the battery out for about 30 seconds to one minute. After that, place the battery back inside, plug in the system, boot it up, and you should then have all of your bus settings reset back to default and you should then be good to go. There's almost no scenario where this shouldn't be stable. Again, if you're running on a relatively consumer grade RAM kit, if you've paid an incredible amount of money to get something really cutting edge, this could be unstable, but for most people, running XMP is absolutely perfectly fine. To enable the XMP settings, we will need to boot into the motherboard's BIOS and that's very simple and easy to do. Regardless of what PC you're on, head to the bottom left, hit your Windows button, right click on your power option, and select restart. When restarting your system, there's then going to be three keys that will get you into the BIOS depending on your system. Typically, it's going to be delete. If it's not delete, it may be F9 or it may be F2. So start by finding the delete key on your keyboard and just repeatedly hitting that button whilst your system restarts. If it's not delete, try F9. If it's not F9, try F2. If you bought into the main splash screen, just keep spamming that delete button and boom, we've now booted into the motherboard's BIOS. Now, before we change anything with inside of your BIOS, I'm just gonna start by saying, do not change any other settings it may be tempting to go around and have a look inside of all the different settings and options with inside of your system, but if you don't know what you're doing, do not change other options with inside of here because you could make your system unstable and require it to be reverted back. When you first boot into the BIOS, this may be on a simple or easy BIOS setting. To change out of this, there will more than likely be a prompt on screen. If not, it may be F2. Once I've hit that on this PC, we can then go through some of the standard options that should be available on your BIOS. Most motherboard manufacturers, and depending on the age of your system, your BIOS could look quite different, but the option Options should still be there. For me, the XMP profile can actually be found under the home section, but for you, it may be in a specific memory page. Just look around until you find something that mentions XMP. For me, the XMP settings can be found under the performance tab, but this may be in a different location on your system. At this point, I can simply navigate down until I find extreme memory profile or XMP. In some motherboards, this could be called DOCP, so if you find XMP or DOCP, that's the option. Inside of here, go to the drop-down menu, and if you do see any profiles available, you may see Profile 1 or even Profile 2, fantastic, that means that you do have XMP available on your system. All you simply need to do is select the profile for Profile 1. Once that's then set up, head over to the top right-hand side, select Save and Exit, Save and Exit, Save and Exit Setup, and that will then apply those changes to your PC. The system may reboot a few times because you've changed a memory setting, so the memory will have to retrain itself, and this is completely normal, so don't be alarmed if the PC restarts a few times before Windows boots. Once Windows boots back up, to check your new memory speed, hit Control, Shift and Escape on your keyboard, head inside of the Task Manager, go to Performance, Memory, and you should then see the brand new speed listed with inside of this page, and at that point you've now successfully enabled XMP. If for some reason you decide that you don't want to run XMP in the future and just want to revert this back, I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do so by quickly booting back into the BIOS, heading over to the XMP settings, turning off the profile you have selected, and setting this back to Disabled. Once that's set, Go to the top right, save and exit, reboot Windows, and you'll then be running back on stock settings. This now leads us on to the benchmark section of the video. On the left hand side you'll see XMP off, and on the right you'll see XMP on, on a few different systems I have available to me. Taking a look at the FPS on the left hand side compared to the right is an incredible performance improvement which has been sat at your fingertips all this time which you may not have even known about. If you have managed to enable XMP on your system and are now running it, let me know of your performance results in that comment section down below, and which games you've found have had the best performance increase. If you're interested in further optimizations to RAM with inside of Windows to getting the most out of your system without having to spend a penny, consider checking out the video on screen now to learn more about your system and how to further optimize it for the best performance possible. If you have enjoyed this video, thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.